If you want to enhance your bench press performance and decrease your risk of injury, you need to warm up well before picking up the bar. Today, I'm going to show you the best bench press warm up routine winning warm ups. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Winning warmups is a warm-up routine consisting of three different exercises, each performed for four rounds of 20 to 25 reps. Today, I'm gonna to take you through each one of those exercises and stick around until the very end because we're gonna have a round table discussion on how you can best program these to fit your needs and goals. You're only as strong as your weakest link, and that weakest link could be a side. Single arm bench press is an excellent way, therefore, to warm up before you pick up the barbell. What this is going to do is prime the exact motion that we're going to be using with heavier weight in the bench press. You're also going to be exposing yourself to being aware of those side to side differences, making sure that you can prime the motor pattern of the bench, warm up the muscles, and make yourself more aware if there's a side to side difference so you can decrease that side to side difference, that asymmetry, and before you then get under the bar. So something like this, four sets of 20 to 25 reps before you pick up the bar. Now what we have right here is a band just holding two 10 pound weights. Every single person who's bench pressing has some 10 pound plates. If you want to, you could also do this with a dumbbell. You could do this with an upside down kettlebell, but for sure, minimal equipment. So single arm bench press before you actually bench press. If you want a big bench, you need to warm up your lats beforehand. Your lats set the foundation for a strong back to press the bar. An easy way to do this with minimal equipment is prone arm raises. You're gonna be picking up some light weights. You could do this with two and a half or five pound plates. And what you're doing is just focusing on picking the hands up. You're not overly retracting the shoulder blades, but you're squeezing the hands up and back down. Make sure that your shoulders don't roll forward when you do this. In doing so, 20 to 25 reps, you're gonna feel your lats right here in your lateral armpits. These are gonna be working pretty hard. But setting these and priming these before getting under the bar is going to enhance your stable foundation for you to have optimal bench press technique. If you want really good bench form and to decrease your risk of tearing up your shoulder or your pec, you need to be priming your triceps prior to getting under the bar. A tricep pushdown cross body like this is an excellent way to do that. Now the reason we're going across the body is because it's less easy to cheat and compensate with your anterior delt like you would sometimes if you're doing this over your head. So going cross body like this allows us to really isolate that tricep put all the emphasis here so that you learn how to use those triceps whenever you're benching, which is a key aspect to optimizing your performance. So four sets of 20 to 25 reps of these on each arm prior to getting under the bar is key. All right, so let's talk about this bench press warm up. Obviously the bench press is gonna be one of those key movements that most people are going to do that go to the gym. They want a big bench press. That's obviously the, one of the key movements that a lot of people do. But I think the key takeaway from today is that two of the movements were not priming your chest or your shoulders. They're priming the backside lats and obviously your triceps because those are two key areas to a big bench press that most people don't even think about. The other one was the movement primer. So we have a movement primer and hitting two exercises that hit the weak links. The movement primer is the one that I wanna speak about first before I would talk to Matt, because that single arm is so key. A lot of people that I see as a physical therapist that come to me with shoulder issues or pec tears, it's because they only do these double arm movements when they're pressing and they're never exposing themselves to a single arm movement that can then often expose those imbalances side to side that aren't even, they don't really Really feel them at first. So when you start priming with your warm up a single arm movement, it's going to decrease those side to side differences so that when you do get under the bar and you're pressing more weight with both hands, you're at less risk for injury and you're going to notice that your movement is going to be that much more crisp because you're hitting the stabilizers just a little bit better. So we talked about the other two important aspects of the winning warmups are hitting your individual weak links, which for most people that are bench pressing is not going to be pecs. It's not going to be shoulders. It's going to be the backside of the body, lats and triceps. Now, you've done a lot of bench pressing in your life. And I think your knowledge and experience in saying that, I think for a lot of people should be one of those big mind blowing motions where you're saying, hey, if you want a bigger bench, if you wanna have less injury, less pec tears, less shoulders, don't concentrate on those areas, concentrate on the other parts. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, I've probably been one of the few lifters that has been able to bench press over 500 pounds for now tw 21 years with no shoulder problems. 
And now the way I was able to do that was I was very lucky. When I was a kid, a guy named Tim Smith was a was a 500 pound bencher at 181 body weight in my hometown. Wow. He won a lot of junior nationals. He was a badass on the bench. And when I show up, I'm in sixth grade. He thinks I'm in high school because I'm already 170 pounds in sixth grade. And he thinks I'm a freshman or a sophomore in high school. And I was like, hey, can I come bench with you? I want to be as strong as you. And being a smart ass, he goes, well, you need to do a pull up first. And he wasn't doing that because he knew what he was doing. He was doing that to see if I'd work my weaknesses mm. because obviously you earn the right to bench press with some of those guys. So I'm practicing in about six weeks. I could do a pull up at 170 pounds as a sixth grader. So he finally was like, all right, screw it. You can lift with me. But what I learned from that, you know, cr crossing back was that my backside needed to be as strong as my front side. And that was a lesson that I had took. And actually it was funny, uh, six, eight years later, when I got introduced to George Halbert and Kenny Patterson at Westside Barbell, they were saying the same thing. The first coaching cue I ever got mm -hmm. from George Halbert was he looked at my arm and goes, your triceps are garbage. <laughs> and I had just benched 500 in front of him as a teenager. Yeah. And so he did that to kind of test to see if I was an ego lifter. So I go and talk to Louie and I'm like, hey, uh, George is telling me my elbows aren't very strong because I was a peck and shoulder, yeah. not dominant bencher, but I used a lot of it. And I was already getting shoulder issues at 20 years old. And so he's like, oh, you need to do these rollbacks and fold ins and all and JM presses. So six or eight months go by and I'm smashing these exercises. I finally started getting some meat back here. George comes up to me and goes, you've been working on the area, I told you, haven't you? And he was an open book at that time because yeah. he knew that him taking a negative statement, I was going to go work on my weaknesses mm -hmm. versus just focus on my strengths and go, oh, screw that guy. I'm a 500-pound bencher. He, I wanted to be a 600-pound bencher, mm -hmm. and I was going to do whatever it took to get that. So the point was is that at a very young age, I learned that the backside, the lats, you don't build a race car and put a 1,000-horsepower motor in a car with not 1,000-horsepower brakes. Mm -hmm. And the lats is what controls the backside to make sure that nothing happens bad on the front side. Yeah. It's all balance. Mm -hmm. So you need to build brakes before you build an engine. Because the tricep is a hinge joint, mm -hmm. it can take more pressure than a ball and socket joint, especially in the upper body. Mm -hmm. So if you smash the triceps and teach them to maximally engage, mm -hmm. you're gonna pull more and more of that pressure off of your shoulder. Allowing, no matter how you're built, allowing you to press longer with less injury. Mm -hmm. How many people have come to you as a PT and go, I messed my elbow up bench pressing? Very little. It's always here. It's always the shoulder. So my point is, is that's the limiting factor. So if you can keep the shoulder healthy, you can get as strong as possible. The only way to do that is to make sure that the backside can stabilize what the front side can do and put more pressure here. Rarely do I ever have someone come to me from physical therapy perspective, from a shoulder injury or a pec tear, and they're too strong on the backside compared to the front side. It's always anterior dominant. That's why you never see people doing internal rotation work for trying to work here. You know, it's always the backside. I've taken plenty of people that can bench press a ton of weight, and I do a simple test for them where I'll put them on their stomach, push them down with one finger sometimes. So they're pushing massive weight here, yet me just forcing a couple pounds of pressure on the backside arm just drops. That shows that clear imbalance. And obviously if we can clear up and take that imbalance and shorten it up a little bit and then get under the bar, we're going to have a lot better longevity and performance. Absolutely. And a lot of times if you just do a posture assessment with a guy with a shirt off and just have him stand, you know, looking at him from the side, you can already see it getting ready to happen yeah. before it happens. So my point is if you look at a guy that has a big bench, they're going to be big back here mm -hmm. and they're going to have a lot of meat on that tricep if they've done it a long time smart. And they're not coming to you for injuries. They're coming to us to try to figure out how to get better yeah. versus rehabbing all the time. Yeah. And that's the hardest part is I think we have a lot of issues with the bench press, especially in general population, because when somebody, the average person walks into a gym, they train what they see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And really the secrets are the things you can't see in the mirror. It's a good point. So Chad, talk to me about from an Olympic weightlifting perspective, obviously we're doing a lot of this horizontal pressing, but in Olympic weightlifting and a lot of people that are also watching this video, they're also wondering how can I even take this and maybe transfer this to vertical pressing? What are things that you would change based on what we did today with the warm up for that? Absolutely, vertical pressing or jerks. And, and I think, you know, one of the things we talked about in a couple of the other videos is transitioning some of these drills or using this area to work on mobility and for Olympic lifting, that's going to be more important. I think more so than the squat and the deadlift with the overhead press or the overhead jerk. In general, we're going to need to work some lat mobility, some T-spine mobility for that overhead position more than anything else. Again, it depends on what that person needs, but those are going to be the, the biggest limiters. Now, 
I love the kettlebell press with the band. Uh, single arm will do that same exact thing, but will be in the standing position or even seated, uh, but upright and, and pressing from that, that position, getting all of those reps in. But after doing one or two mobility drills, especially for those athletes that struggle with getting a bar overhead and, and it being a, a strong, uh, comfortable, mobile, strong position. So. I think the big thing I see, and just this is just from the outside looking in, obviously I've never been an Olympic lifter, the stronger guys in those areas that we just discussed doesn't help them perform the lift, but it does help them if something gets a little bit out of whack to be able to correct it and then be able to save the lift. Mm -hmm. The strong guy can fix that. The weak guy has to focus solely on technique. And I'm saying technique is the most important thing, but that 5% of the time when something gets out of whack, the stronger guy can finish and the weaker guy is not going to. One thing I wanna to add to that too, we talked about this with the deadlift and with the squat specifically, but for the Olympic lifter pressing overhead or maybe for the power lifter that's doing a press here where they want maybe just a little bit more stability emphasis is that you could also change these instead of doing again the four sets of 20 to 25 reps is that you could have a five second hold. So you could do your single arm press, whether that's this way or even vertical and have a good five second hold up there. Obviously you're gonna decrease your reps. Maybe you're only doing 10 with a three to five second hold, but that way you're priming that stability aspect. I would well. do the same movement that I did on the bench press, but I would sit in a full depth squat and do my bench, do my vertical presses that way. Cause now you're getting the mobility of being comfortable in the bottom of a snatch position or a, or a clean position, but you're pushing that overhead and developing all that stability to when that bar comes up, yeah. you have so much stability control that it's we just gonna- do, We do a lot of bottom squat pressing and stuff Yeah, like well, that. I was gonna say, you, you, yeah. you know I love that, but now we're for sure talking about the athlete need to be doing probably two different mobility drills to prime them for that primer. You yeah. know, to be able to press from the bottom of the squat, or it's something that you can definitely progress into. You know, do it standing, do it, do it in a seated position where you're leaning forward a little bit more, so you have to push back. So, you know, this is a harder position than this completely um, upright torso is. So, you know, work yourself into that. You're gonna need a lot of lower body mobility to be able to do that press from the bottom of the squat as well, but progressing into something like that I love. And if you're capable of doing that, you're in a place to where you can really get some good work in and, and do yourself a lot of good. I think the biggest takeaway is that the warm up is not just there just to get your heart pumping. It's there to be purposeful and to prime the movement that we're doing, but to also hit your weak links. And I think that's a big thing. You have to be very conscious of what are your weak links. We have these general patterns. And when it comes to the bench press, a lot of the weak links for people are on the backside. When it comes to overhead pressing, it's still that, but also much more mobility. So how you can modify it to go mobility, mobility, full primer. And you will you will see performance increases by raising temperature. So if you're doing a warm up that's hitting all your weaknesses, helping your mobility and increasing temperature, where's the downside other than you have to be fit enough to do it? Yeah, getting the best of all all the different factors within right. it. There you go guys. So hope you guys enjoyed this bench press uh, warm up video routine and be sure to go follow both of these guys on their YouTube and their Instagram page. Uh, until next time guys, happy bench pressing. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos? These people have lost.